Hi everyone, welcome to the next video on weather. This is going to be talking about global and local winds. Alright, so to start off it would be good if you knew what wind was. It's the movement of air from high pressure to low pressure. So the only way to have wind is to have an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure. And generally, the bigger the difference between them, the faster the wind's going to move. So if there's a large difference in the pressure amounts, you're going to get your fastest winds. Now, wind is actually caused by the fact that the Earth is unequally heated. So if you remember back to astronomy, the Earth is on a tilt, and this is going to cause different sections of the Earth to get different amount of insulation. Which, this is like the chain of effect here, if you have unequal heating, you're going to have places with different temperatures. And if you remember from the air pressure video, the last one, different temperatures causes there to be different pressure. Remember, warm is low pressure and cooler is higher pressure. Which means if you have different pressure, that's going to give you your movement of air because the air is going to move from the high pressure to the low pressure. That's your wind. So this is your chain of effect. Without the unequal heating, you wouldn't have the different temperatures, which means you wouldn't have different pressures, which means you probably wouldn't have that much wind. So this is generally what, how it happens. Now, on your reference table, page 14, this is going to be your global wind picture. So I'm just going to run through what I think is the most important things to know here. This is zero degrees, which is the equator, so it's really warm here. And if it's warm, the air is going to rise off of the Earth, creating a low pressure here. And then these convection currents are going to bring the air to both sides. And then they're going to sink down here and here. So if this is sinking, that means it's a high pressure, which means it's probably dry, which is labeled for you. And the same thing happens here. And this pattern actually repeats. So this is another low pressure here, another high pressure at the poles, and then a low pressure down here, and a high pressure at the south pole. So it's a pattern. And the reason the pattern started is pretty much from the equator and the poles. The poles are cold, so you're going to have sinking up here and at the south pole. And the equator is warm. Uh, a couple other things to notice about this is that we live here, where I put this X. We're at 42 degrees north, so we're between 30 and 60, which means we are in this wind belt, which are the southwesterlies. Where they're called the prevailing southwesterlies. So this makes all of our weather go towards the northeast, if you look at the arrows. The only other thing I would say to know about this chart is if the arrows are coming together, this is called converging. And if the, the arrows are going apart, that's called diverging. So for example, the air converges at the equator. See, the arrows are coming together. Uh, another example is the air diverges at the surface of 30 degrees north. So you got an arrow going this way and an arrow going this way. So they can ask sort of like if the air is converging or diverging at different spots, essentially. Okay. Um, the only other thing I can mention right now, which we're going to get ahead, uh, uh, we're going to do eventually, this area is dry, this area has moisture, and this area is dry. That's why we have deserts here and here and rainforests here, generally. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like a little later. Um, there's this belt of wind in the troposphere called the jet stream, and you might know about this because if you are flying with the jet stream and you go on a flight, your flight time is normally less because it's this giant air mass of wind at like 30,000 feet. It says it even here on this newscast. That's where planes normally fly. So if you're going with it, you go faster. If you're going against it, you generally go slower. But this is also part of the reason why all the clouds in the air um, is also moving towards the northeast across the United States. So they're sort of related. And the jet stream can shift throughout the year. So sometimes it's more north and sometimes it's more south, which will change our weather. 
This is just an easier diagram to look at than this one. So if you look at this one, here's the United States right here. We live around here. So the prevailing westerlies is our giant wind belt, meaning all of our weather goes to the northeast. And the other good thing about this is that normally we have hurricanes that come up towards Florida over here. So sometimes they steer away the hurricanes. This is a picture of where the deserts and the rainforests are. So you could see around 30 north, this is dry on that other chart, and so is this. So you get your deserts and deserts, and then over here at the equator, this is your moisture area by the equator, so you get all the rainforests. Um, the last thing about global winds that is important is that the ocean currents, and we talked about this page already, the direction is caused by the, the global wind patterns and by the Coriolis effect, which is causing the winds and the water to curve. Okay, so this is more of local winds. So here's a picture of the beach. This is the first type of wind phenomena that you're going to get. It's called a sea breeze, and it happens when the sun's out, generally during the day. So if you remember from the energy unit, water has a high specific heat. That means it takes a really long time to heat up and cool down. And the land has a low specific heat. That means it heats up and cools down pretty quickly. So what happens during the day is that the sand gets really hot and the water stays cool. So warm air is going to rise and since it rises and it's warm, you're going to get a low pressure developing over the sand. Now the opposite is going to be happening over the water because it's cooler. So the air is going to be sinking here and it's cool. So you're going to get a high pressure over here. And what's going to happen is the air from the high pressure is going to move to the low pressure. This creates the, a wind. And this is called a sea breeze. And the reason it's called a sea breeze is because it comes from the sea. Wind is named from where it comes from. Now you're going to get the opposite effect at night. For a land breeze to happen, you're going to need it to be nighttime. And at night, remember, the water has a high specific heat, so it takes longer to cool down at night. So the water is actually going to be warmer then the land at night, the land's going to cool down very rapidly because it has such a low specific heat. So since your temperatures switch, your pressures will also switch. Warmer, low pressure, rise. Cooler, high pressure, sink. And you get this convection loop that happens. And your air goes from high pressure to low pressure. So you get a land breeze. Because the breeze comes from the land. So this is a phenomena that occurs because of the wind, because of the pressure, and uh, because of the temperature. So you feel it when you go to the beach. It's pretty awesome. All right. And the last little thing for this video is going to be determining where fast winds are on a map full of isobars. So these are isolines that measure pressure. If the isobars are close together, that means it's a high gradient, which means that the pressure is changing very quickly over a short distance. So this area here, this is a high gradient. It's a lot of change over a small distance. And if there's a high gradient, that means it, there is fast wind. So when the lines are close together, you get your fastest wind. And normally you would see that near a low pressure because it's a stormy area. Stormy, cloudy, precipitation. So if you look by the high pressure, there's normally not lines close together. Over here again, another windy area. Fast wind here, slow wind where they're not close together. It's directly related to the steepness of contour lines. 
Remember we said for contour maps that when the lines are close together, it's steep slope like a cliff? Well, it's the same premise, except for pressure, when the lines are close together, it's fast wind. Okay, so let's see if we can get some questions right. Question one, in which cross section, which just means a side view, do the arrows represent the most probable direction of air movement over land and water at a coast on a hot, sunny summer afternoon? So if it's afternoon and it's hot and sunny, you're gonna get a sea breeze. Remember, sea breeze means the wind is coming from the sea. So look at, find the arrows where the arrows are coming from the sea. D is the best answer, it's going here. This is a land breeze, because the breeze is coming from the land, and this doesn't happen, and that doesn't happen. It's either always going to be this one or this one. Number two. Why are most beaches often considerably cooler than nearby inland locations on hot summer afternoons? That's because water takes time to heat up and cool down because it has a high specific heat. So you want to pick something like that. A sea breeze develops due to the higher specific heat of water. B. And again, your keyword there, hot summer afternoon. A sea breeze always happens during the day, and a land breeze happens at night. Number three, we got our ocean, uh, sorry, our global wind patterns. Which climatic condition exists where the trade winds around the equator converge? Well, here's where they converge. Remember, these two arrows are going to meet up with these two arrows. So what's going to happen there? Well, it says wet. So we can get any dries out. Now, then you got to think, oh, the equator. Is it warm or cold? It is warm. C, best answer. Number four, which wind belt do most storms move towards the northeast? Well, in the United States. Remember the prevailing southwesterlies? That's our wind belt. And the southwesterlies move everything to the northeast because they come from the southwest. Now you can also just use this chart here. And you can look and look at the arrows between the latitudes and that is the only one where they're coming from the southwest blowing towards the northeast. So you would just use your reference table on that question. Okay. Number five. From the eastern United States, the change of the polar front jet stream from the summer position, which looks like it says here, summer, to the winter position, so the jet stream moved down. What would this cause? Well, immediately you could see the wind speed went from 60 miles an hour to 125. So the storms are going to move faster if the wind is blowing further. So this one that says it's moving more slowly, that's out. This one is out. And if this polar jet stream, polar means cold, that means cooler temperatures are going to be far farther south now because the whole thing moved down. So D is your best answer. Now that question was mainly being able to interpret the picture. You really didn't have to know anything content-wise. You just had to look at the picture. Number six, which location most likely recorded the highest wind speed? Okay, remember, isobars, when they're close, that means you're going to have a high gradient, which means you're going to have fast winds. So it looks like B has them where they're really close. So that's the best answer. Number seven, wind moves from. Wind is always high to low pressure. B. Number eight. 
the arrows show the most likely path where which two systems will move. So which way is the H and the L probably going to go if they're over the United States? Remember, we are in the prevailing southwesterlies, so all of our weather is going to go towards the northeast. So your best answer is D. And I lost my mouse. Lost my little pen. D. So everything's going to go this way. Always. D. Number nine. We got a the sea breeze. A little picture. The air pressure at the surface a few miles from the shore, so like over here, is most likely what? Well, remember, to get a breeze or to get wind, you need to go from high pressure to low pressure. So you want, if this is the low, you want this temp uh, pressure to be higher. So it's got to be D. 1017. If it was 1013, there would be no wind. And if it was B or A, that means that the wind would go the other way. And the last one. So they got city A pressures over the course of four days, city B pressures over the course of four days. The wind speed in the region between A and B was probably greatest on which day? You want the one where they're the biggest difference. So the ones with the biggest difference is going to be, it looks like this one's like about two millibars difference. This one's about 11. This one's about three and this one's about zero. So day three, since you have your biggest difference, you will have your fastest wins. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Again, uh, I just want to tell you that I don't think that these videos should be a complete replacement of studying your notes and, you know, whatever, asking your teacher questions and stuff like that. Um, but it, it should be used on, a, on the side of the normal things that you would normally do, not the only thing that you end up doing, all right? All right, good luck. See you on the next one.